My name is Hannah Zhu. I'm a CA1 resident at New York Presbyterian Hospital Weill Cornell, and my colleagues here, Robert, Daniel, Michael, Lisha, Zach, and I, are very honored to be presenting our abstract at ASRA 2017, titled Increased Morbidity and Mortality of Total Hip Replacements for the Uninsured and Underinsured. Thank you for clicking to our video. Have you wondered how insurance status affect patient care? We wanted to know that with regards to one of the most commonly done surgeries in the United States, total hip replacements. Our purpose is to show that insurance status is a perioperative risk factor and not to negatively single out any given insurance plan. Our hypothesis is that those with Medicaid and uninsured patients probably have worse post-op outcomes following total hip replacements. We took HCUP state inpatient databases of California, Florida, and New York over a five-year study period on adult patients and had close to 300,000 data set for which we uh, cohorted by insurance status, Medicaid, Medicare, private insurance, other types of insurance, or no insurance. Our outcomes are in-hospital mortality, readmission rates at 30 days and 90 days, and post-operative complications as listed here. We try to control for bias with bivariate analyses by insurance type uh, through patient demographics, as listed here, and their comorbidities on admission. Our results are listed in these two tables. With bivariate associations by insurance status, those with private insurance end up having the lowest percentages of in-hospital mortality, post-op complications, and readmission rates at 30 and 90 days. On table two, when, when comparing all the other insurance types to private insurance with odds ratio of one for reference, those with Medicaid and Medicare insurance types have the highest odds ratios, with the majority being statistically significant in asterisks here. So to summarize, patients with Medicaid and those in general not having private insurance have the highest rates of in-hospital mortality, post-op complications, and 30 and 90 day readmission rates. Studies have shown that there's a strong association between insurance status and race when it comes to healthcare disparities. Since we can't change race, there are other factors we could change that is contributing to healthcare inequality. For instance, intraoperatively, those who are black or have Medicaid insurance end up being offered fewer neuroaxial anesthesia options than general anesthesia when it comes to total hip replacements. And then postoperatively following total hip replacements, minorities end up getting prescribed uh, fewer opioids and end up having more pain than whites. Now, these decisions and any sort of inherent racial bias is likely done subconsciously by providers. There's a study that's, that indicates that providers are especially hard at recognizing uh, health inequalities in their own specialty. Our study is the most up-to-date analysis on this subject with regards to insurance status and healthcare outcomes in total hip replacements. Our strength is in our numbers. We have close to 300,000 data points. We took three of the top 10 most populous states in the U.S., accounting for close to 25% of the U.S. population. And we controlled for bias with regards to patient demographics and comorbidities with our bivariate analyses. Our limitations involve that our analyses are based on administrative data sets, so we're prone to coding errors. There's also no patient identifiers, so it's hard for follow-up discharge analyses. We also did just represent um, a minority of the patients at less than 75% of the U.S. population. And there are inherent bias in the system that, there is, uh, that we could not uh, control with our analyses, such as selection bias, the type of patients that go to the type of hospitals, and the expertise of the physicians there. In conclusion, we achieved what we set out to do to show that insurance status is predictive of periodic operative risks. And in doing so, we highlight larger socioeconomic and healthcare related issues at play that need to be addressed to improve surgical outcomes for all. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you at ASRA 2017.